Well, uh, good morning uh, in the UK. Um, good afternoon uh, in, uh, in in Japan. And that's where we are for Shop Talk Live World Tour. We're focused on one of the most advanced convenience markets in the world, which we find in uh, in Japan. It's a great pleasure uh, to be focusing on such an exciting country on Shop Talk Live today. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, two very special guests, uh, Scott Annan and uh, Hidenori, uh, Hidenori San, if you could join us. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, Dan. So I should say, ahai um, gozaimasu, uh, or konbanwa to you, Hidenori San. Ohai Good morning. Ohai <laughs> Now, th welcome both. Before we start, I have a confession to make. Um, Japan is a very special country to me because I've spent quite quite a bit of time there when I was younger. And perhaps as a bit of an icebreaker, I can just show you um, a few pictures uh, oh. back in <laughs> 1992 um, oh. when I... Uh, when I spent a year there, <laughs> you you were you were you got a clothes. Yeah, Japanese. Not every Japan. day, not every day. But <laughs> I, I did a homestay with a Japanese family, the Kinoshita family in Takunotsuka, um, and you can see a picture of, of them on on the left. Um, anyway, the serious. That's enough of of, of my memories. But the serious <laughs> the serious point uh, here, in a way, is that. Um, I've always felt that Japan has an awful lot to offer um, the rest of the world, you know, in terms of learnings in all kinds of ways. But for our industry in convenience retail, Scott, and I'm sure you can comment on this because it's a market you've spent many years in. Um, there are huge opportunities for, for learning in Japan for our industry in convenience retail, Scott, aren't there? Yes, yes, Dan. Uh, I, I've been privileged to have visited since 1995. And uh, one of the things I've come away with is that their, their relentless focus on customer service, outstanding store operations, you know, three fresh deliveries a day. Uh, I, I find the country inspirational from a retail perspective. And there's an awful lot that uh, we can learn. And um, Hidenori san it's always a pleasure to see you. You've been over to, 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 to Europe and spoken at events over here. And um, of course, we visited you. Scott and I have both visited you at Family Mart yeah. head office in Tokyo over the years. So again, we're delighted you're able to, to talk a little bit about some of the things that, uh, that Family Mart have been doing in, um, in, in, in your businesses across, um, across Asia. Yeah. So I'm very so honored to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. So perhaps we could start, we can have a chat as we get going, but perhaps we could um, we could take a look at some of your slides just to allow you to talk Did through uh, the Family Mart business a bit, Hidenori. And Scott and I will, of course, um, comment as, as, as we go, but perhaps we could hand over to you to, to give us a bit of a talk at the start of this um, program. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for watching uh, my presentation. So I'm Hidenori Tsunematsu. I'm working for Family Mart more than 30 years. So today, let me explain about uh, how the Japanese system market uh, has been changed and will be changed. So uh, next, please. Next slide, yes. So in 2021, this year is very important for the Japanese people. Of course, there are, there, there are two major uh, uh, events. But anyway, this year marks 10 years, the, uh, not anniversary, but 10 years, uh, exactly 10 years after the Great East Japan earthquake. At the time, uh, more than 20,000 people were dead or missing. And family master damaged uh, more than 700 stores. Some of the stores are wa were washed away, and uh, unfortunately, some store staff were dead due to the tsunami, big tidal wave. But after 10 years, as you can see th this picture, Fukushima area 
uh, has been recovered very much. And you are very nervous when you beat Japan due to the nuclear power plant erosion. But now I'm living in Tokyo for 10 years. I'm okay. So that's, that's why I, we can uh, secure so how we Japan recovered from the disasters. Okay, next please. So let me think about the next important uh, uh, event. So as you might know, the Tokyo Olympics game will be held on 23rd of July. But unfortunately, uh, the Japanese government and IOC decided uh, we don't invite foreign tourists or foreign Indian visitors from all over the world. So we cannot expect the sales growth in summer. That is a, a headache for us. Next, please. And uh, we are suffering from the COVID infections at like any other countries. But uh, the number of infections are very little compared with the UK. Uh, proportionally or po populationally, just so uh, the Japanese people uh, are infected 0.37 against the total population, the so your country 6.4. So Japanese people, how can I say, are very uh, pay attention to sanitary or uh, pay attention to uh, hygienic. And uh, the Japanese queen cuisine helps us. Okay, so next please. So that is the bad side. But uh, at the same time, uh, in 2021, so I feel peculiar, I mean, Japanese Nikkei price hit 30,000 yen. So in three decades, and a year ago, the price was only 17,000. So in spite of these but circumstances, Japanese market uh, has been soared. But some of the companies, such as Sony and Toyota, uh, has have made growth, so hit the uh, high price. So there are some good examples. So there are some signs or landmark for the future. Please. However. Uh, we have a fundamental, yeah, or uh, the social problems. So Japan is the most uh, highest uh, overage population. At the moment, or oh, nearly 20% of people are over 75 years old. And within 20 years, the ratio will be reached more or less 40 percent. That's why we have to change or cope with the future population or the, the ratio of people. So next please. Of course uh, the, the, the household unit will also be changed and uh, as like the UK, more single household unit and only uh, husband or wife household will be increased. So we have to change the traditional way of the uh, sales. So we have to uh, consider two major points, aging population and uh, changing the household, uh, changing the household, household. So please. So oh, let me say about retail market in Japan. As you can see, uh, she stores uh, has been growing steadily and uh, supermarket is stable. But 
uh, e-commerce such as Amazon or uh, Lacten uh, has been here and higher and higher. So they exceeded our sales in 2015. Family Mart or other she stores uh, has been have been considering. We shouldn't compete with e-commerce. Uh, we have to collaborate with them. So we have uh, actual stores all over Japan. So we, we are seeking for the new ways uh, to increase our sales with by collaborating e-commerce. Okay. So Family Mart also uh, has been yeah, uh, growing, especially as you can see, uh, five years ago in 2016, Family Mart merged with Circle K and Sanks. So we overtook Lawson. So uh, we plowed all the number of stores. We are uh, the number two in the Japanese market. But uh, as you can see, uh, recently, uh, we are, you know, how can I say, uh, some, somehow oversaturated. So that's why the next page uh, is please. Next, please. Okay, before. Uh, let me kiss about a uh, little bit Japan uh, family map. So as I said, uh, the number of stores is uh, nearly 70,000. So since 2016, the number of stores are stable. It means we open many hundreds of stores, but at the same time, we close hundreds of stores. So the Japanese market uh, are changing rapidly. So in terms of Know, population and those oversaturated stores. So we are seeking for, for we have to uh, look for another yeah, way. Okay, please. And uh, in addition to the number of stores, a uh, family mat, including overseas stores, uh, we have uh, nearly 25,000 stores. And especially we concentrate on uh, Taiwan or China. So we have to increase more stores uh, internationally in abroad, please. So uh, maybe uh, many audience don't know what Family Mart is like. So our stores are not so big, about Japanese, so 120 or 30 square meters, sorry, meters. <laughs> and uh, nearly, 6% of sales are from daily food, such as uh, sandwiches, so lunch boxes, what we call bento, or onigi rice bowls. So please, next. So uh, uh, we are changing. Our, our size of stores have been bigger and bigger uh, because uh, we have to change the style of stores. That's why we put eating corners uh, for new stores. And interestingly, <laughs> more uh, to be more uh, comfortably, so to be the stores, we put high tech toilets. So <laughs> uh, Japanese toilets are very you know, well known. So. That's why even uh, for C stores, we have installed such uh, automatic, open, automatic, I can say, clean system. So please enjoy our new stores, please. Next, okay. So uh, as I said, uh, there are many uh, out, uh, outer, uh, circumstances uh, such as population decrease, aging society, more things per uh, household, and uh, more foreign uh, customers. So we have to consider, uh, we have to change so 
our target market was young youth, uh, teens or 20s or 30s. That's why uh, I have to explain how we will be changed. So please, next. Next slide. So uh, uh, we have four major concerns, especially a labor shortage. So young people are, are de decreasing. And uh, of course, uh, we have to uh, uh, decrease the burden of uh, store uh, working. And uh, also more customer friendly, especially for elderly or foreign uh, customers. But I put new one after COVID-19. So what is most important? Uh, we have to change the merchandise mix, especially uh, how we, uh, yeah, I think about the influence of COVID-19. So then uh, the target, of course, the most important profit, uh, profitability. So next, please. So in order to strengthen profit profitability, uh, we have to put on emphasis on more you know, uh, daily foods. So there are two main uh, lines. So deserts and high added value rice bowls. Maybe Dan or scott uh, you came to Japan. We offer a variety of confectionery or dessert. But uh, our dessert uh, became, have become more you know, a high quality one or custom made ones. And as you might know, uh, Japanese staple food is rice, rice balls. And each store sells 200 rice balls a day on average. But uh, Japanese people are reluctant to eat ordinary one. And we put on high added. So as you can see, the big high quality salmon was salmon rolls. So we uh, have to make a difference uh, against supermarket or uh, department stores. So next, please. And uh, of course, we have uh, uh, problems. And as, as I said, uh, labor shortage problems causes 24-7 uh, opening. So some of the stores uh, want to stop open 24-7. That's why a year ago, uh, nearly 6% stores uh, stopped to open 24-7. And uh, that is uh, one problem how to gather or how to decrease the labor sh uh, shortage. And the uh, uh, second one is another, I don't know, sorry, before, headache. Uh, we have to support for franchisees uh, due to the, uh, uh, the somehow loss, not losses, but to, uh, how to save the cost. And you can see COVID-19 countermeasures, we support 3 billion yen, means one store receive 200,000 yen uh, as a as save for the, uh, their levy, uh, revenue. Next, please. So labor shortage initiatives are quite important for us. That's why we have installed new terminals and cashless. And especially Japanese uh, retailers uh, put on emphasis on cashless. So we use, we started uh, Fami Pay. It's a uh, cashless payment. And uh, as you can see, interesting, new shelves. And uh, we try 
to do our best to how we should uh, yeah, decrease the uh, uh, labor shortage. So next, please. And uh, maybe you'll be surprised to see this Model T robots. Actually, the, the man, I see the staff, sit on uh, a far from no, five, no, five miles from the store. And uh, they, he moves his hand, Model T, uh, uh, automatically receive the, then so Model T put on the goods on shelves. So this is just on trial basis, but uh, in the future, uh, we, would like to, yeah, we strongly want to, yeah, install Model T for all stores. But uh, uh, we just started, I don't know the, uh, so I can say uh, this Model T will be effective or not at the moment, anyway. So please, next please. And, um, oh. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for listening to my presentation. So, Family Mart oh, has been evolving uh, in terms of uh, merch merchandising and uh, or technologically. And uh, we have to you know, uh, change for the, uh, to cope with the future Japanese market. Thank you very much. Arigato. Oh, arigato gozaimashita, um, <laughs> Hidenori-san. Ter terrific. <laughs> terrific. Um, thank you very much. Well, um, I'm sure we can have a bit of discussion because some very interesting points uh, you raised there, Hidenori-san. Perhaps, Scott, I can bring you in at first um, before we go back to give uh, Hidenori a, a, a break. Um, what were your, you know, so I've got lots of takeaways. I, I, I've taken lots of notes um, when I looked at this presentation earlier and thought about it. I mean, what are your, now Japan is a market that you always take visitors to from our industry, Scott, you know, and you've just looked at an overview of Family Mart's business. I mean, what are some of the key learnings for you just to take it from the top? Yes, thank you, Dan. Uh, ex excellent presentation, Hidenori, really enjoyed it. Um, no, I've been I've been privileged, as I said, Dan. I've I've taken five groups to Japan. Uh, Hidenori San has helped many many times. Uh, my my big takeaways are if you look at the size of convenience, almost the same size or slightly bigger than the supermarkets. So very different markets to ones we're used to, where you know the food retailers tend to dominate. It's also a big focus on daily food. Um, doesn't matter that they're not now all 24 seven. They genuinely do day part. There are three fresh deliveries a day to most stores. And the thing I, I like about that is that it is really day part, the logistics, the operations, the things that Hidenori has talked about in taking away routine tasks, whether we are doing it with our fun robot friend or we're, we're just <laughs> taking away the, uh, the task. I did notice the robot was wearing a mask hidden, Ori. You, you're really, <laughs> really confusing me there, but never mind. But they're, they're taking away routine tasks and allowing the, the team in the store to have more customer interaction, make sure mm. that the products are available. So. I, my, my big memory of Japan convenience is fantastic food, very good ah, yes. quality, affordable, yeah. very competitive, and dinner is different from breakfast, which is something ah, yes. I think here in um, Western markets we, we could kind of yeah. learn a lot from. So that, that'd be my big um, takeaways, Dan. Yeah, and maybe before you come in again, Hidenori, I can just give you my reaction and build on what you said, Scott, because I think, you know, from our point of view, you've definitely um, pinned it down to that three, three to that replenishment question in a way, yes. isn't it? And the, 
the th- genuine um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, three three Japan. parts, uh, three day parts yep. um, yep. offer that you find in in, in Japan. And I mean, I, I suppose you know, looking at Japan, Scott, uh, for me, the the interest has always been we can see the progression in, for instance, Western Europe towards uh, better and better convenience food being available in store. But Japan is still ahead of us in terms of the of those day parts and and it, to a certain extent in the freshness of the product uh, that's mm. that's available to, to customers. So it's a very good learning for us, isn't it, to understand how you know how the operations behind that offer work in Japan. And and as you say, very interesting to see you know how uh, Family Mart are, are experimenting with uh, you know robotics for replenishment and um you know systems to 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 allow that to continue because obviously the challenges in the market around the aging population also affect the staff that uh, in in the store you know it's an aging aging staff as well as aging customers right. yep hisori so so it's um it's interesting to see your evolution isn't it uh, yes definitely so uh so when you yeah, you, when you are in Japan, so there are many so old people, and uh, recently we have to hire old staff, <laughs> so more than 60 years old. So in that case, they don't have enough power to carry or do replacement, so carrying heavy uh, goods. So that's why uh, we need to consider the new ways to help. Yes, and and um, I, I, you know, it's it's. I think the other thing that um, that I was very interested in, and perhaps you know, we can pull up the picture, Nick, if uh, if you could, of the of the store design, which shows the seating area on the left and the and the high tech toilet, oh, yes, that's right. um, as well, because that's a huge change uh, from what I remember visiting Family Mart's uh, last time I was in in Tokyo. It's a it's a big yeah, departure, right. isn't it? Oh, uh, yes. And uh, recent, no, no, the uh, the new uh, data. So nearly forty percent have forty percent of stores have the eating corners. That's why. So every new store has this type of eating corner. So uh, our store uh, have been changing. So to more customer friendly and stay family mode. Uh, for longer and longer. That is our you know, uh, target. What do you think of that, Scott? Did that strike you um, strongly as it, as it did me when you saw the image? Oh, absolutely, Dan. Um, the, the high-tech toilets, looking at the Total Store, very famous brand in Japan, Toto, and is, oh, hid, is Hidenori-san says, because he, he very kindly came to visit us in Kew Gardens a few years ago. Um, we've gone all very Japanese in in our uh, bathrooms here because we also have Toto. And it's it's something that if I look, we, we talk about bathrooms, uh, toilets, restrooms being really mm. important in European US convenience stores, but quite a lot of the time it's talk, whereas they've taken it forward. We can we can see it here. They've taken it forward. The eating corners is something that, you know, Hidenori saw when he visited uh, Ireland a few years ago. Oh, yeah. So we, we do have markets who are really good at this. So we've got the tiny population of Ireland who kind of do what we can see here right away through to the massive population of Japan. So we've got these two very famous food for today marketplaces, which strangely enough are actually remarkably similar. The only difference between them would be would be the language. The stores are actually starting to become similar and we've learned that from our Japanese friends. I, I think just staying on this picture, Scott, um, and Hidenori-san, I mean, the, the other thing that really makes an impression on me is the efficiency of the space. Because oh, yeah. you've got, obviously, very small space here. And I think oh. very cleverly, you've, 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 you've obviously 
created a private seating area, which, well, semi-private seating area where if you like, you know, the customer probably feels relaxed enough to sit down and have something to eat without feeling that they're in the way, which I think will be very important in Japan, but also in other countries uh, as, as well. So I think that it's a very clever use of space. Um, you've devoted a big area um, to the high-tech toilets. We can see it's a huge, must be a huge priority to give that much space to it, um, which is a very interesting. And I guess mm. the reason you've been able to do those two things is because you've been so efficient with your ranging um, in the re in the main part of the store. And and if you look at the space efficiency of the products that you're ranging, it's you you must have worked very hard at creating the right uh, the right product range yeah. uh, in in yeah. that part of the store. That's right. And uh, as I forget to tell you, so uh, to, uh, to cope with the COVID-19 or the, the population changing, uh, recently we put more frozen uh, food rather than the processed food. And uh, uh, we have to take care of like housewives or older people uh, who don't, uh, they, who don't uh, who don't cook at home. So ready to eat meals or frozen food, more and more important for us. That's interesting, isn't it, Scott? Frozen becoming more important rather than less important. Yeah, yes, yes, Dan. And, and when I uh, visited Hidenori-san last year, he, he kindly gave me a, a store to a day and uh, I was visiting Family Mart, obviously, Lawson, 7-Eleven, and, and the supermarkets within their portfolios. And the big change I'd seen from two years before was really good quality selection of frozen meals, mm -hmm. oh, which was it. something new to Japan. But my understanding from my uh, Japanese friends is this continues to grow. So that's very important now. You, you raised a point on um, the efficiency, Dan. One of the things I've learned over many, many years uh, working with Hidenori-san is if a product goes into a store and it's not performing, uh, within one week or two weeks, it has gone. It has gone. So they, they are doing what I call square centimeter category management on a daily basis. The other thing is very different from our marketplace. Although 90, over 90% 90 of the retailers are franchisees, it's actually yes. run very professionally like a, a, a multiple, like a corporate. Yeah, You won't see any difference if you go in as a shopper. And the second difference is suppliers... Uh, don't go into stores and do the sort of things that they do in our markets. Very tightly controlled professionally by the center to ensure the focus is always on the customer needs and not perhaps on, you know, the supplier needs. So some fundamental differences that perhaps people didn't, didn't know, Dan. Very good point, Scott. Um, Hidenori, the other thing that you said that really struck me was when you when you showed the um, the data on e-commerce and how oh, looking yeah. over the last few years you've seen e-commerce grow and grow in Japan just as as we have yeah. elsewhere, of course. And then you made the point and you said that we, we don't think we should see e-commerce as a competitor. We yeah. have to we have to partner with e-commerce and make it work for our business as well. I thought that was a, a very interesting way of looking at it. Yes, yes. And that is that the point is uh, we have 60,000 stores all over Japan. And uh, of course, uh, that's such an Amazon's, uh, of course, every day they have to deliver. It. And uh, yes, some, yeah, some household uh, are not at home. Uh, then, so Family Mart uh, helps to receive the good is on behalf of each household. And of, of course, so we can 
uh, receive a commission from e-commerce. So, uh, and uh, uh, we also uh, have uh, multimedia kiosk. Then, uh, listen, many customers are using multimedia kiosk to deliver to the another their customers. So, like uh, we are kind of hubs for the e-commerce business. So that's yeah. why. Yes. Yeah. It makes sense. Of course, Japan has very high population density, yeah. doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah, you know, that in is. many ways, Scott, it's a perfect market for, for that, that hub model where, you know, many people will live. There's a huge population living within walking distance. Um, of a of a family mart store in many many parts of Japan. Yeah, the 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 last mile, Dan, or or in, oh, yes. in the case of Japan, the last hundred meters, because although it has a, a population say twice the UK, it, it it sits in a very tight geography in Japan because of the yeah. the mountains and the islands and. So the ability for people to come to a store and, and pick up their e-commerce or indeed drop it off orders is, is very, very simple. Similar mm -hmm. things are happening in, in other high population markets. We've seen it in uh, with our friends in China. Recently, I saw it in India where they're using uh, not so much convenience stores, but dark stores. So exactly the same principle. Within 100 meters of where you work or the train station, very important in Japan, mm -hmm. you can actually get, get, your, get your orders. And I think the way the convenience retail has partnered with e-commerce oh, yes. is, is, is excellent because e-commerce needs that final 100 meters. Mm -hmm. Convenience stores benefit from those customers coming in. They make a small commission, yeah. but yeah. as always, you know, people need to eat and drink and, you know, they're perhaps right. having their, their dinner and lunch while they're there and Hidenori sounds agreeing with yeah. me. So um, I think that's an excellent strategy, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, look, one other thing that, uh, that you said, Hidenori, that I was particularly interested in was around luxury products, desserts oh, yeah. and high added value rice balls uh, mm. to, 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 to categories that you, you, you focused on. That's interesting too, isn't it, Scott? Because um, in a way, uh, you know, the, I, I guess one of the, one, perhaps one of the impacts of the pandemic, you know, and, and the changes to consumer oh, yes, needs right. is, is related to this opportunity, do you think? Yeah, yes, Dan. And uh, the, the third thing I think, when I, I bring in that point of difference. If one looks at products that don't last a week or two weeks, if they're not successful, the proprietary products that Hidenori is talking about in terms of desserts, high value rice balls, they are very unique to the 17,000 family mart stores. Lawson, uh, our friends at 7-Eleven will have their equivalent, but they have dedicated yes. food factories, dedicated distribution, and they can move very, very quickly because they own the brand. And uh, I, I'm not the world's biggest dessert fan, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I eat lots of desserts when I come to Tokyo because, you know, they're, they're, they're really good. And the amount of change that takes place on a weekly basis to refresh the range that can be done because of the, uh, the headquarters control. So there's nobody going off and saying, you know, I can buy a different dessert or a cheaper dessert. It's very, very controlled, which gives the quality, gives the brand, gives that consumer consistency. And it's done at pace. So, you know, I think a couple of hundred lines are changing on a weekly mm. basis, which is something else we can learn from because it makes visiting the stores interesting yeah. and different every time. Yeah. And I can add it, Japanese consumers uh, have changed a lot. So their eyes very severe to choose goods. That's why we have to, yeah, 
put a new uh, high quality uh, yeah, dessert on the bento lunch boxes. Oh, very, very good. I mean, interestingly, looking at across Shop Talk Live episodes, Hidenori, San and Scott, you know, one of the things that some retailers who are doing well have really focused on, just like you have at Family Mart, Hidenori, San, is, is really product innovation and the pace of product innovation. So you're surprising your customers uh, with new products just as they start to realize or even a little bit ahead of before they want them, you know, so that they're, 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 they're surprised by the product just at the right time, you know, and, and the only way you can do that is if you have a really, as you say, Scott, a really rapid pace of, of it, of product innovation and, 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 you know, you're, your 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 the product has to prove its worth very quickly in order to stay on the shelf yeah, and I, I think one of the learnings as well dan is that um we sometimes get a little bit confused in our definition of of what do we mean by being an independent retailer the thing i've learned about japan is you can be a fantastic independent retailer because you are supported by this, you know, world-class corporate headquarters in terms of proprietary food, technology, distribution, marketing, uh, as Hidenori san said, cashless payment. Um, <clears throat> I remember many, many years ago, you know, getting my PASMO in Tokyo to ride around <laughs> on the subway and you know, I can go into a family mart, I can pay for things, I can use it in the taxi. It's made so convenient for you that you don't have to worry about these things. You just need to focus on, who, what am I having for lunch? So there, there, there is a big difference there. And independence means something totally different. Independence means professionalism, serving my customers, rather mm -hmm. than can I buy something cheaper, better elsewhere? That, that is not in the equation. And I, 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 for one, think it's a much better customer service than perhaps some of the things, uh, some of our behaviors, um, you know, in terms of independent thinking. That's a great point. Look, I think we should, um, we should just uh, sum up now, um, guys. And let me just... Uh, let me just make the, the, com the final comment from my side before we thank you both for joining us on Shop Talk Live. Over many editions of Shop Talk Live, we've had some you know, big retailer names on from Tesco to 7-Eleven to Spa. So I have to say it's highly appropriate that Family Mart, you know, one of the world's leading convenience operators, uh, <laughs> the most innovative, uh, dynamic business you know, that's had a huge record of success over the last few decades uh, is able to join us on Shop Talk Live and talk about one of the most interesting markets in the world, uh, Japan, which has so much to offer uh, the rest of the world in terms of learning. So, you know, I feel personally very strongly about this, but thank you very much, Hidenori san for, for, for joining us and talking about your superb business. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. Again, arigato. Arigato, because I mashed that. Scott, thank you for joining us too, and for your usual, uh, you know, very, uh, very original, innovative contributions. Much appreciated. Thank you, Dan. It's 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 been a pleasure, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing Hidenori San in the flesh again, rather than on Zoom. Very good. Very good. <laughs> thank you very much for watching, sure. and. Um, that was Shop Talk Live World Tour in Japan. We'll see you again soon. Good afternoon.